Adobe has made some big changes to their AI tools for doing object removal. Not only have they changed the behavior of some of their tools, they've added new tools. They've also changed the policy on how generative credits are used in some circumstances, but not all that glitters is gold. There are caveats to be aware of in certain circumstances. And so what I want to do in this video is cover all this and how these new tools are used. And then also I want to show you a non AI alternative in Photoshop that can do object removal in many cases much faster. To show these remove tools, this is an opportune photo to use because there is a lot of clutter. Now, normally I wouldn't remove anything unless the client paid me, but this is a common add-on that you can provide and you can do it a lot quicker than having your client do the traditional and the older days sending this out to then have object removal done by a third party company. So you can actually use this as an add-on. What we're gonna do is first take a look at some of the basics and then we're gonna move up to some of the more complex and new tools that do a much better job. So the first thing is, let's take a look at maybe removing this whole area over here. We need to remove a lot of that. It would be tricky though, if we use the standard remove tool. Now, if you're not familiar with the remove tool, that's over here on the menu. And when you click on this area that has the spot healing brush and whatnot, there is the remove tool. Now, before using it, a couple things to note that are new. One is that all the way over here, there's something called create new layer. Now this works really well unless you have an adjustment layer on top of your layer. Then it gets confused. I'll show you an example of that. But what you want to have in most cases is have remove after each stroke unchecked. That way you can paint over an entire area and see how well it would be removed. There's two options here, and that's generative AI on or off. Most of the time we'd be using generative AI off, which is very quick. But generative AI on, which does take longer, used to use a generative credit, but it no longer uses a generative credit anymore. So anything that you use with the remove tool, no matter what the option is, generative AI on or off or even auto, none of this will use any of your generative credits. So the first thing here, if I were to remove something very simple, let's just say that we wanted to remove this trash can here, and I'll do it with generative AI off. And what I'm going to do then is take the remove tool and I'm going to then draw around the shadow here of where that trash can is, get that whole thing. When I come around here and I release, if it closes that, then it did a good job of detecting the object that should be removed. Then you can either just click the checkbox up here or you can press enter on your keyboard and very quickly then it removed that object. And it did an okay job, but it really did mess up a little area down here. You can see though that it made a new layer. Let's back out of that and let's take a look at where the problem would come by not being able to create a new layer. Let's say that I had an adjustment layer on top of here. So for instance, if I had layer, new adjustment layer, and let's say just a hue saturation layer, I was doing maybe some color corrections with this image. If I went here and I tried to do then the remove tool and I said sample all layers, remove after each stroke, just like we did before, and I said create new layer, when I go here, you can see that that's blocked out. I can't even use the remove tool. In this case, I'd have to make a new layer and start on that. So in this case, I'd have to go to layer and then new layer and then create a blank layer. And from that, then you can see it's now active. In that case, I wouldn't need to create a new layer and I could uncheck that. Well, we saw what happened last time when we had generative AI off. So now let's do generative AI on and try to remove this trash can again. So what I'll do is I'll once again draw around this area of the trash can so that I make sure I include that shadow and everything around it. When I come around to close the circle, sure enough, it caught that. It knows this is the item that needs to be removed. So now once again, I'll click the checkbox or you can press enter on the keyboard and this will take just a little bit longer. It has to do a little bit more work than the non-generative AI. 
When it's done though, you can see it did a much better job. Here, we didn't lose or mess up any of that baseboard. So you can see this is with it, this is without it. There's still a little bit more that should be touched up here, and you could still use the Remove tool to do that if you wanted to. In fact, here, I could probably then use Generative AI Off, which would be very quick. I don't need to make a new layer. We'll just keep doing it on this layer. Zoom in here, and let's just brush over those shadows. This should get rid of those shadows. I can just hit enter on my keyboard, and sure enough, the shadows went away. Okay, so that covers the basics of using the Remove tool, but there's something else to be aware of when using the Remove tool or any of these other tools, and that's that there is a size limit of 2,000 pixels. And that's because everything that it's gonna use in the generative AI engines, just like Firefly, there is a 2,000 pixel limit. So something to be aware of while you're working on large images. For instance, if I were to draw something to see, could I remove all this down here using the Remove tool? Well, I could judge that by just taking a polygon tool and running around this area here and seeing how big it is. You can find out by going over to your info panel and looking at the width and height. If you don't see this info panel, then you can select that from the window menu and you'll see there's info. So I know that this will barely fit in there. If I went a little bit larger, it wouldn't do a good job. I'm at 1800 pixels in one dimension, but this should be okay. So I'll just deselect that though. And what I'll do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'll try to use the remove tool, see what kind of a job this does. Now, if I were to use the standard remove tool and I had generative AI off, I know it's going to get a bad result because this is just a quick and easy way of doing something for Photoshop. But I'll still do it here and I'm going to draw around this area, close it, and then with generative AI off, we will though this time create a new layer. I'll hit the checkbox or once again enter on your keyboard and the result is just awful. Now, this is very typical of using the remove tool with generative of AI off. So there's better alternatives. The first, we're going to go back to use generative AI on. What we'll do is we'll just take this back to where we were and we'll take generative AI on and we'll do the remove tool again, but there's going to be a better way that I'll show you here coming up next. So first though, let's take the remove tool with generative AI on and we'll once again go around this area. And when we do, it closes, and now we can hit our enter on the keyboard or the checkbox, and now it'll go out and do a more refined type of generative remove. And when that's done, we've got something that's a little better. At least it was better than what we had before. It's not at all perfect, but you can see that it did a fairly good job. Now, we still have to touch this up, but that was pretty good and it did once again generative AI on, still didn't require any generative credits, but there are better ways to do this. Now, while that was covering a lot of the basic remove tool, there's a new one that's been added and there's also been some changes as well. And I still wanna show you that non-AI alternative also for doing object removal. But before getting to that, I just wanted to mention real quick that if you did wanna learn more about real estate photography, then I'd invite you to take a look at my courses on real estate photography. I've got courses that cover professional interiors, expert editing, exteriors, videography, business and marketing, and I've also written a series of books on real estate photography as well, and I have links to all of that down in the description of this video. So now let's get back here to something that can do a much better job here with some new tools and also some alternatives to getting rid of all this stuff right here. What I'm going to do is zoom in here a little bit, and the first thing I'm going to do is grab the contextual taskbar. So if you don't have the contextual taskbar visible, as you can see here, I don't, what you would do is you'd go up to your window menu and select contextual taskbar. I'll move this over so we can kind of see what all we're working on. And here, what I'm gonna do is use the lasso tool and I'm gonna draw a lasso around this area. Once I do that, you'll see that there's this remove button on the contextual taskbar. Now, if you're on a blank layer and you try to hit the remove tool, you're going to get an error. You can see the target layer is unsupported. That's because it's turned off. 
So you need to go to the most active layer, which is here, and then you click remove. Now this will then create a new layer every single time. There isn't an option right now to not have it do it, but once it's done, you can see it did a really good job. Now it's still not perfect. This is once again, not costing you a generative credit, but it is using a type of generative AI to figure that out. You can see this is with that remove tool on the contextual taskbar. And then this was using the remove tool that was the standard remove tool. So that was definitely a better option. We got something that looks pretty good, but we can even take this further. What I'll do, I'll just turn all these layers off, go back above this layer, and let's draw another lasso around this area that we want to remove. Then in the contextual taskbar, I'll use generative fill. Now, when I do that, I do get an option to prompt, if I want to, to put in something that would fill this area. If you leave it blank, it should just remove the items that it's detecting. In this case, it will use a generative credit when I click generate, but the nice thing about this is it's going to give me three options. And as you can see, I've got three options here then to choose from. We'll zoom in here a little bit so we can get a, a better look at how well or how bad this did. You can see this did a better job. It even included in the reflection here, the leg from this play pen. So compared to our other options that we had, that was missing. So now with our generative fill, we see this and I've got three options. One, two, and then three to choose from. If I wasn't happy with it, I could keep clicking generate. And if I needed to, I could also then put a prompt in of something else that I might want there. Now that I'm done with using the contextual taskbar, I like to close it. You can just click on these three little dots and then you can say hide bar. But now what I want to do is I want to show a non AI alternative. Let's use this image as an example. This is where this tool will shine. And this is where if we wanted to remove a whole lot of simple things, we don't want to take the time to keep having generative AI or the remove tool take up all these CPU resources and going out to the internet to figure things out. For instance, we've got a bunch of leaves down here. To remove all these with the remove tool would just be so cumbersome. So instead, this is how I would do it. First, let's make ourselves a blank layer to work on. So I'm going to go up to layer, new layer, and just create a blank layer. And then over here where the remove tool is, click and hold, and then we're going to use the spot healing brush. With the spot healing brush, if it's sampling all layers, then we can do this on this blank layer. What you can do then is just adjust that size and as you click and drag, it immediately removes. So you can just go very quick across all these different leaves and it just takes seconds to remove then all these and you can see that not only is it going quick, I'm not really using any resources. You're not going to hear the fans whine up on your uh, computer to try to cool down your CPU because this is just going very quick. So once we have that done, we can see then this is with all those leaves removed and this is without it. And it took just a few seconds and I didn't have to use AI to do it. But there are so many tools in Photoshop that you can use for doing all kinds of things. Sure, we do have a variety of AI tools that can help us out, but they don't work very well in all cases and they can be cumbersome, use a lot of CPU time as well. So with a variety of other tools that Photoshop has, including the spot healing brush, you can then decide what would work best for your object removal and other edits as you're working with real estate photography.